So today I'll be demonstrating how to lock an AOSense ECDL to an AOSense laser lock module. Pictured here, the system consists of an AOSense 852 nanometer ECDL controlled by an AOSense servo and integrated laser controller, or SILK for short. The laser is coupled into a fiber splitter where a portion of the light is coupled into an AOSense saturated absorption laser lock module, which contains a cesium vapor cell. To generate the error signal, the light is also coupled through a waveguide modulator driven by a 5 MHz signal coming from the silk module. So let's take a look at the locking process. On the left, we have the integrated laser controller utility used to program the ECDL, uh, where the laser is already up and running and stabilized. On the right, we have oscilloscope traces coming from the silk module. In blue, we have the ramp monitor, and in red, we have the photodiode signal coming from the cesium vapor cell, where you can see the laser is tuned uh, right now to scan the current uh, precisely over the cesium absorption dips. Let's instead take a look at the error signal by switching the output uh, from the photodiode monitor to the error signal output monitor. Here you can see that in the location of each of those absorption dips uh, is a clean error signal. So to lock lock the laser uh, to the cesium cell, all one has to do is change the lock mode from scanning the current to lock. Here you can see that the, the silk module identified a lock point and upon reaching it, the, the air signal has flattened to zero. So to get a little more understanding of this process, let's switch back to scan mode and see what's going on. Specifically, if you look at this, the blue trace, which is the ramp monitor, you can see that it's identified in these voltage jumps three potential lock points. Those lock points are identified by setting an arm threshold, voltage threshold, and then, and then a lock point. So in this case, it's set to around 27 millivolts and then expected to lock at zero, zero millivolts. So in this case, these, it's clear where these three points are identified, and by changing this threshold, you can also exclude peaks. And in this case, this peak, the smaller peak, is excluded. One can also change which peak to lock to. Before, I locked to the first peak, and in this case, I'll attempt locking to the second peak. And here you can see that the silk has now locked to the second peak identified. And with that, you have a locked ECDL.